Hey guys and welcome back to another A-Level Maths Made Easy video. Today we're going to be looking at proof, but I want to just say, full disclosure, this is not going to include proof by contradiction, because proof by contradiction is far more in-depth, in detail, there's a lot more that they can ask you, whereas this type of proof partly is just kind of GCSE style of proof, but also there's some new stuff that I wanted to go through. So just so you know, it's the year 12 regular proofs that they can ask you. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the first question. First question just asks you to prove that x squared minus 4x plus 7 is positive for all values of x. And this is something that, funnily enough, a few students aren't too sure about. So when you do this, you have to do it algebraically. So the proof that we do, for the most part in A level, is going to be algebraically. And, that, and the reason for that is if we do it using algebra, so using just letters and variables, we prove it for every single possible value. If you think about this, if I try and sub in values, I'd have to sub in an infinite number of values to show it's always positive, right? I'd have to do from minus infinity to plus infinity. Instead, if we do it through algebra, you only have to do a few values. Now the question is, how do you prove that a quadratic is always positive? Well, if I write it like this, it might help you. You're trying to prove that this thing is always greater than zero. The way I would do this, and the way I one of the only ways that I can think of to do this is to just do completing the square because completing the square gives you the minimum point. If that minimum point is above zero, then you're done. So if we do completing the square on this, remember how to do that. All you need to do is you half the number in front of x. So we have x minus 2 squared minus minus 2 squared and then plus 7. Expanding that you get x minus 2 all squared then minus 4 plus 7 and lastly, you get x minus 2 squared plus 3. Now, how do I know that this is always positive? Well, you can get the minimum or technically maximum point from this. All you do is you change the sign of the number in the bracket. So instead of a minus 2, it's a plus 2. And you keep this sign exactly the same. If you go back to the completing the square video, I do explain how that works. But essentially how it works is if you try and look for the smallest value this is, you look at the part that can vary, which is this bracket. What is the smallest value this bracket can be? Well, if it's negative, it gets squared and becomes positive. So the smallest value this can be is when the bracket is equal to 0, which happens when x equals 2. That is the smallest thing this function can be overall. Now, this is greater than 0, right? The y value is greater than 0, therefore always positive. And that works for literally every value of x, and I haven't had to sub in a billion different values. The next thing I can ask you is, and this is quite interesting, is it's pretty much just the GCSE style of question. So prove and then some kind of statement. Now, I want to point out that if you want even numbers, then you're going to write it as 2n. If you want odd numbers, it'd be 2n plus 1. The word consecutive means that the numbers follow each other. So what do I mean by that? Well, the numbers 1, 2 are consecutive, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, and so on. Consecutive odd numbers would be like this, 1, 3, 5, and 7, and so on. So the idea is they can ask you for consecutive odd or even numbers. All you need to do is add 2 to both of these expressions. Why? Because if you notice, it, uh, between every pair of odd numbers that are consecutive, there's always a plus 2, and the same with even, right? The even numbers are 2, 4, 6. There's always going to be an add 2 in between them. So all you need to do is take these original expressions for even and odd and add 2 to them in order to swipe this out. So let's go through the motions now. <clears throat> Prove that the sum of two consecutive odd numbers, so we have 2n plus 3, right, because 2n plus 1 plus 2, and then you have 2n plus another 2, so plus 5, okay? And we need to prove that it is a multiple of 4. Now, in this case, if you want to prove that a expression is a multiple of anything, uh, with 2, 4, 8, a million, 3, whatever, all you're going to do is try and factorise uh, that number out. So we're going to try and factorize a 4 out of this expression. By the way, an even number is a multiple of 2. So if they ask you to show that an expression is always even, for example, you're just going to try and factorize out a 2. So collecting the like terms, we get 4n plus 8, which I can write as <coughs> 4n plus 2. So because we have this uh, 4 factorized out, it must be a multiple of 4. And why is that? Well, if you think about it, if you do 4 times any integer, 
you're always going to get a multiple of four, right? Four times one, four times two, four times three, and so on. How do I know it's an integer? Because it's an odd number. So this is an odd number, or n is just a number, plus two, that's still an, an, an integer, times four. Still an integer, and it also must be a multiple of four. Prove that the sum of the squares of two consecutive odd integers is always two more than a multiple of eight. Again, students kind of get into their own heads about this, they get a bit too worked up. Break it down, so it's, so it's a sum, so we're gonna have an add. Squares, so we're going to be squaring two things. <clears throat> like this. Of two consecutive odd integers, so again, we're going to have that 2n plus three and 2n plus five. And then it says it's always two more than a multiple of eight. That part might seem a bit weird, and it is weird, but first of all, if you just do the, so first of all you get a mark for this, if you actually just do the expansion simplifying, you get most of the marks anyway. So expanding this, we would get 4n squared, then you get plus 12n, plus nine, then plus again 4n squared, plus 20n, plus 25. So then we get 8n squared, plus 32n, plus 34. Prove there's always two more than a multiple of eight. That's a bit tricky. Here's how I would do it. <clears throat> if you have a look at this, this is divisible by eight. This is divisible by eight, but this isn't. However, if I were to break this 34 into 32 plus two, that is now a multiple of eight. So what they're intending for you to do here is to do this. Oops. How do I know that, that that you can do that? Well, to be honest, I wouldn't have known to do that unless it told me it's always two more than. So I'm trying to split up the 34 into two and another number, it must be 32. Then if I factorize this, we get eight n squared plus four n <coughs> plus four plus two. So this is always, of course, a multiple of eight. And then this means it's two more. There's two more than a multiple of eight always. So again, that little trick there is a bit tricky. It's not really something you would have known, but you can kind of get the hint from the way the question is worded. And here we're going through the last one. So I know this might seem a bit of a shorter one. Um, I am a bit ill, so that's why I decided to pick a topic that was slightly shorter. But again, with the proofs, it's all about just practicing as many as humanly possible. There aren't too many tricks involved. Um, and we've pretty much gone through quite a few of them. So writing odd and even numbers, consecutive numbers, and of course, <clears throat> showing that things are positive. The last one I wanted to go through is proving these kind of inequalities. As you can see, it's still a quadratic. So a smart thing to do would be to move everything over to one side because with a quadratic, generally speaking, you want it equal to zero or at least one side of the equation to equal zero. So moving this over, we get n squared plus six n plus 12. And now we're actually just proving that this is positive, which links back to the very first question we did in the video. We're just going to use completing the square. So again, <clears throat> if you ever have a quadratic, it's always good to make sure one side is equal to zero. It is a very common uh, step that I don't see many people take all the time. Um, they sometimes get a bit flustered to get a bit in their own head. So again, doing the completing the square, we have n uh, plus three squared. <clears throat> Minus three squared. In fact, yeah, yeah, we'll do this. So n plus three squared minus nine plus twelve. And as you can see, this is indeed bigger than zero. If for some reason we got a negative number, then we would know that this statement's actually false, which kind of links to the proof by contradiction, which we'll be doing in a future video. But that is essentially how you do these kinds of proofs. Really important to do because these are worth three or four marks, which is quite a lot to be, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we'll leave it there.